What's going on guys? This is Kazi. Welcome to another amazing popular movie looks episode and this time we're creating something that pretty much every single one of you, 54,000 of you asked for which is how to create a Blade Runner look and this is one of many many different parts that I'm gonna pick from this movie and uh, attack but this one is probably the most iconic shot and when you look at it it might just make your head spin you're just like I don't even know this is gonna be the most complicated grade like you don't even know the first thing how to attack it but when you watch what I'm gonna do with this and how I'm gonna break it down it's gonna be a freaking breeze and eventually you'll be able to apply this grade to your footage if you're working on a piece that supports it of course because you know how big I am when it comes to purpose behind your color grading and for those that want to level up their color grading game check out the link in the description one hour long free training where I will show you how to get the perfect skin tones out of your Sony S-Log 8-bit footage how to get the clean white look it's the go-to commercial look how to get the creamy film look how to fix the dreaded gamma shift and much much more link is in the description and guys smash that like button if you're enjoying the content subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness and oh my god i love you guys so freaking much we just hit hundred thousand followers on instagram it is all because of you please follow me there if you're not already i'm dropping so much information there i'm interviewing crazy crazy industry people next week we're bringing on the colorist of mad max eric whip on april 29th at 11 a.m pacific time it's gonna be an ig live so make sure to follow me on instagram and do not miss it let's roll the intro Blade Runner is one of my favorite movies of all time when it comes to color grading and I am just so pumped to be attacking this. So first things first, as always, let's just go in our open effects and I'm gonna bring in my color palette, hide this, and then check this out. Look at what's happening. So there are no true black points and there is no highlights. So nothing is pure white or pure black. That's the first thing that you gotta understand. And it's basically living in the middle like it's it's hazy and then look at the vector scope and where everything is sitting i mean this is probably mitch paulson who's roger deacon's color is like finest work because the way he massages the frame like where everything is just so gentle but it's so stylized i mean have you seen anything more stylized than this just read this like what is this this makes no sense the scopes God will give you a freaking F on this, you know, but this is the beauty of it. Once you understand the intention and the purpose, then go for it and create something that will become as iconic as this is. So let's just read it really quick, okay? Uh, our darkest parts are gonna be these dark browns, which is what he is and he pops out because of that. Everything else is light and sitting in the higher mids and then he is the lowest part of that. So it's a nice silhouette and it works in that case. Tons of yellows and oranges that are happening here. Okay. And just a somewhat of a red tones right there that are going on in the darker areas. So now that we have that in mind, let's just see what we have to work with. So this is our shot. It doesn't look anything like it at all. And I'm going to park it on a hero frame somewhere around here. So obviously it's just a normal looking shot. It was shot on red Raven. So I'm going to go under my camera raw settings in my project right now is set to legacy dragon color two, red gamma four. That's not what I want. So I'm going to open up my image. I'm going to go under clip. So it gives me all these options. I'm going to choose IPP two. I'm going to choose red, white gamut RGB. And in my gamma curve, I'm going to choose log three G 10 it gives us the most amount of range that we can expect from red. So now that that is set to go, um, we have to get here and we are here. Okay, so one thing that I wanna do actually, let's just do this. I'm gonna go under my reference sizing and I'm gonna make this bigger, something like that, okay. And that's the image that we have to work with, cool. Okay, so let's bring it down. I'm gonna pop it open in the selected still images. So now we can see our image. 
next to what we're working with. And let's try to get some more real estate so you guys can see it clearly. I'm going to do this, make this bigger. So I think this is, I think this is actually fine. Let's move that back a little bit. There you go. So first thing I'm going to do is, as always, I'm going to start off with my contrast. So let's get going. And then I'm going to use my pivot this time to raise it up because I want to get the brightness levels correct. But this is just basically really, really early on. So I'm not going to do too much. I'm just going to park it somewhere around here. That's good. That's, that was my exposure. My second node is basically I'm going to make this smaller so you guys can see it better. The second one is going to be my saturation. So in this node, this is for our saturation, but I'm going to do something very interesting. I'm going to go under my RGB mixer and I'm going to just turn on monochrome because this is what's going on here. I mean, they're really playing with analogous colors and we don't necessarily need any other color because everything is going to live in that world. So I'm just taking all the color out so it can actually help me get there faster. Now I'm in my balance node or this time we're just going to call it look creation and I'm going to start off with my offset and I'm going to start just going in. I'm going to go in hard. Okay. I'm really pushing it into that world. Maybe somewhere around here. So that's pretty good. And we can even see it here. I mean, just look at that. So where the reds are sitting compared to Blade Runner, where the greens are sitting. So you know that we're doing, we're headed in the right direction, okay? And that's just in one look node. Now I'm going to go in my gain and I'm going to start bringing in that yellow that we have in our image on the right side. Okay, so now if I see this right up here is right there, these tones are looking like they're, sitting in pretty well and we can obviously see that we're kind of going past that threshold which is totally fine because I'm going to show you what we need to do one we can bring the image down a little bit so let me just go in my gain and pull it down so that works that's totally fine but that's saving us another way to protect ourselves is in our RGB curves high soft just look at the top up here okay I'm just going to pull this down ever so slightly. And that's going to give us some more headroom up there too. Okay, so this to me is looking pretty good. All right, just look at it. Reds, greens, this is where we started. This is where we are. So, I mean, we're already looking really good. Now what I want to do is I'm going to go under my windows. I'm going to create a... I'm going to pull out go right here i'm going to create a window and i'm going to start something like that bring it closer maybe expand it a little bit more and then really soften it up a lot and now i'm going to go and invert it and uh, i'm going to take my luma gain just this and i'm going to start pulling it down and now what i want to do is i want to see what it's doing so i'm going to put it next to that and like you see how there's a really nice curve that's happening. Like we can see it here. Like see how strong that is. So we're trying to create that. And if I do before and after, I mean, it's there. It's looking good. Now what I need to do is go right here in my first node and really try to bring it up like that and then add a little bit more contrast. Okay, we can inject more contrast here, which I'm going to show you a really cool technique how we can do that. So let's go in here. Let's create a parallel node. And in our parallel, what I want to do is this. I'm going to create another window. And it's going to be a circular window. Let's go turn on our windows right here. And I'm going to put it right here. Pull it down like so and expand it expand it even more well that's not bad now what i want to do is i want to go back to these both of these images and 
now I'm going to start raising my gain. And I'm going to try to create that shape that they have going on. You see? So I'm going to try to create that shape. And then what I want to do is just add more yellow into it. Okay. So that started to do the trick. We still can raise our entire image up to kind of match it better with what's going on there, but we'll get there in a minute. And what I want to do now, one more thing that I want to show you is go into your qualifier in your luminance value. And I'm going to turn on my highlights. And let's get out of here so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to come out of this. You guys can see what's happening. And I'm basically adjusting my low range. Let me turn this on again. So basically what I want to do is I want to grab, I do not want to grab my trees. I want it to affect all the surrounding areas, but I don't necessarily want it to grab the trees. Okay. So I want it to raise all of this like highlighted areas, but not the trees. And that's exactly what it's doing now. So it's creating a nice contrast because of that too. But now what's going to happen is I'm going to go ahead and create another parallel. And this time I'm going to do pretty much the opposite. So it could be just this and something like that. And we can obviously give it a really nice softness. And this time what I want to do is I'm going to go back in my qualifiers. And guys, the, the reason why I do qualifiers like this is because that's the cleanest way to do it. Okay. And now I'm going to turn on my highlights and I'm basically saying, hey, grab only the darker areas. And now we can just add more, we can inject more contrast. And the reason why I'm doing this is because, so now we can just really park it here and see how we can start bringing it closer to that. See what I'm saying? So where we started to where we ended up. Now that's going to make a big, big difference. And um, a lot has happened in these three nodes. Then one more thing that I want to show you is I'm going to create an adjustment layer. And in my adjustment layer, I'm going to do a similar thing. I'm going to basically do this and turn on my highlights and then go in and just grab all the super, super low end areas. And now this is what I want to do. So let's look at this. Okay, I'm going to make this full screen. You see how my line is going straight, right? And then you see this dip that's happening in Blade Runner is because their shadows or the darker areas are desaturated and we did not apply anything like that so far, okay? So we don't have that going on. So that's the technique that I'm gonna show you. So basically what we're gonna be doing is just going into our saturation and pulling it down and look what's happening. So we're starting to, you see this, and you can see it right here in these areas. Now, we don't want to overdo it, so we can bring it back a little bit. But you can clearly see that we're starting to add more of what's happening here. Okay? And again, we don't want to overdo it, just the right amount. And one more thing that I can do is I can open up my contrast too. So in my contrast... I'm just going to dial it back to kind of let it breathe. See, I'm doing that right now. Now, one thing that I see is we just need more contrast in the trees. It's good, but I think it can be better. We can also try doing this. So let's put it next to each other. What I can do in this node is I can take my, I'll go back in here. I can take my gamma luminance value and just try to bring it down and see it adds a little bit more color. Obviously, we don't want to overdo it. And then I want to go back into my first node and give it a little bit more punch. And then bring it down overall. So I think we just got to give our trees more love. So we already created that, but I think I want to push it a bit more, to be honest with you. So I'm going to keep going. Because basically, 
again, we got to do a similar thing to what happened here where the eye is drawn to him because he's a silhouette. We have to create that silhouette, maybe not go that extreme. So I'm going to pull it back a little bit, but even something like that is really doing the trick. One more thing that I can just think of doing would be in here. I mean, I can just kind of really bring that up. So the focus is not so much under here, but in the main areas where I want it to be. Now, the one thing that I'm noticing is that with this node, I think we can get close. So a couple of things that I want to do. First of all, I'm going to reset my saturation. Okay, that's fine. So what I want to do is now my focus is really the bottom of these scopes and I really want to get them super, super close. So I'm going to start lifting. Now I'm going to take my lift and just move it a little bit towards that same red. And now I'm going to lift it even more. If we look at our parade now at the bottom, like look at where it was to where it is. So it might not look like much, but you know it's doing a ton. Yeah, I think now we're much closer, to be honest with you. So let's just do a breakdown from start to finish, okay? We went into our camera raw setting since this is shot on red and we set it up to get the most latitude. Then the first thing I did was just contrast and pivot just to get my contrast right. Then I made the image monochrome completely and went into my look node and then started dialing everything in. But this was just basically think of it as like a base grade. And then we started getting in, created some windows. And this right there already brought us really close to our image. And then I went in and created another window that kind of gives us this key light that we got going on. Then I brought my trees out because the trees in this shot are the hero. So I wanted to just give it the same emphasis as we see here. And then finally, we adjusted the ground a little bit to like really get it close. So this is where we were before the last adjustment. And then this is where we are. And uh, you can even see it if I do this to that, like look at how it does that dip. And we see that dip in our Blade Runner too. So let's check out the final look in full screen. I hope you guys had a blast and you saw how many little intricate things that we had to do to really get in the ballpark, but it was all serving the narrative, the story, the story being the trees were the hero in the shot and we built the entire grade around it, okay? And that's what happened in Blade Runner 2. So do not forget when you start creating these looks, don't get lost by the overall, you know, nature of it and how far you've come because sometimes you will still confuse your audience because they wouldn't know where to look at and by just bringing the contrast down and really nailing those trees we created this interest in our image where everything is sort of hazy but then the trees just draw attention because that is the silhouette you know against this beautiful painting like grade that we created don't forget to drop a comment let me know which look should i do next smash that like button subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness make sure to check the link in the description one hour long free training i will see you all in the next video